welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where you might be able to hear my voice. <laughs> my voice is giving up the ghost slowly, um, but I am determined to keep recording videos. I've not missed a day for over three years, so um, uh, uh, I don't want to lose that record, that is for sure. And uh, to tempt me into video production today, we have something rather special. It is called Anti-Ratio Astronomy and it's by Skojo. And the reason this puzzle is um, unusual, I suppose, is it is one of very, very few three-star rated puzzles on Logic Masters Germany that has a 100% approval rating. In fact, I, I decided to test that hypothesis and I actually went to Logic Masters Germany and it does have a search function there. And if you search for Sudoku puzzles that have had, say, a secret number of solves, so more than 45 solves that have a 100% approval rating, there are only two puzzles in existence that meet that criteria. If you go down to two stars or one, stars out of, one star out of difficulty, there are literally zero puzzles that 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 have any number of solves at that rating. So it's a really, really unusual thing to achieve. And this puzzle is a spiral galaxies puzzle, which is a form of puzzle I'm incredibly fond of. So I hope, Skojo, um, I will be able to do your puzzle some justice, even in my adult state. Um, now, what do I want to talk to you about before before we kick off with, with solving today? <laughs> there are only three days left to solve um, Trick or Treat, which is our monthly reward. Uh, for October over on Patreon. So you've got until the 20th to send in your answers to be in with a chance of winning the competition. That ought to be plenty of time if you've not started yet, but you probably do need to start quite soon. Um, other than that, we've got Line Sudoku. That's a new app that's out, of course, on all platforms. And I've got two birthdays to do today. Um, I'm going to start off with Amy. Amy down there in Golden Bay, New Zealand has turned 41 and Amy wrote us the most wonderful email. Um, Amy sounds like the person I would like to meet at a party. Um, and in fact, one of the things that Amy talked about was poetry. Um, why is my phone buzzing, uh, buzzing at me? Oh, that's fine. Um, and um, she described talking to, I think, a very famous uh, New Zealand poet called Sam Hunt um, about poetry um, and Sam Hunt revealing to her his favourite poem, which I thought I might share with you. I'm not sure it'll do my voice any good, um, but it's called Why Don't You Talk To Me? And it's by another Kiwi poet called Alistair T. Ariki Campbell. Um, I, and I think he died in 2009, but I thought I might read it to you. I'm in poetry, um, poetry reading mode at the moment because I'm having to record a whole host of poetry as one of the rewards for Kickstarter backers for our, for our second book. Um, so anyway, this is, this is Why Don't You Talk To Me? Why do I post my love letters in a hollow log? Why put my lips to a knot hole in a tree and whisper your name? The spiders spread their nets and catch the sun, and by my foot in the dry grass, ants rebuild a broken city. Butterflies pair in the wind, and the yellow bee, his holsters packed with bread, rides the blue air like a drunken cowboy. More and more I find myself talking to the sea. I am alone with my footsteps. I watch the tide recede, and I am left with miles of shining sand. Why don't you talk to me? It's re I, love, I love that. I think it's very, very, it's a beautiful poem. And I think, to me, it feels like it's about time and maybe lost time um but um but yeah amy thank you very much for sending that to us um and oh there was something else i wanted to mention about it what was it oh that's going to infuriate me now i can't remember oh no 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 oh yes i have remembered Oh, I have remembered. It's okay. So Amy described this poem as like um, 
like harakiki on a warm breeze. And I didn't know the word harakiki, but it is um, apparently it's a, a New Zealand flax. Um, so it's sort of, I, I think harakiki in a warm breeze, you know, you can imagine how it might move. Um, and I thought, oh, well, that was a very poetic description of a beautiful poem. Um, so anyway, that that is one birthday announcement. Amy, I hope you're able to have chocolate cake. I think you are planning to. So I hope it's a good birthday. Um, and next, I would like to say a very happy birthday to Anthony. Good name, that, Anthony. Um, <laughs> who has turned the big 6-0 today. And I know this because your son Rory wrote to us, Anthony, and said you might appreciate a shout out. And I am to tell you, that you're bound to win the Private Eye Crossword Prize one of these weeks. Um, apparently you submit it every week and never win. Well, there are many, many of us Cruciverb lists who have gone through that in, in any number of crossword um, types, let me tell you. Um, and also uh, Rory said, I should wish you good luck with uh, this month's Jane Street puzzle. I've not looked at this month's Jane Street puzzle. Is it hard this month? Um, so I don't know if that's a genuine good luck or a sort of good luck, no one's ever going to solve it type uh, wish. But anyway, Anthony, happy birthday. <laughs> um, now, let's have a look at anti-ratio astronomy by Skojo and see what the great man has in store for us. These are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row column and every three by three box. We get given digits today, which we actually got quite a lot of given digits. And some of them are the same, which is completely unheard of. Um, and then we have to divide the grid into galaxies, which are orthogonally connected groups of cells that have 180 degree rotational symmetry about their centers and do not overlap with other galaxies. All cells must be part of a galaxy and the center of every galaxy is marked by a red dot. So these are the galaxy centers. So let's let's just look at this one to sort of illustrate how galaxies work. So they have to be rotationally symmetric about the, this midpoint. So if we decided that this cell was in this galaxy, so we'd make it red, then we would know for sure that this cell must also be in this galaxy. So we could do something like that. That would be a completely legitimate galaxy around this red dot. Um, so a cell that couldn't be in this galaxy would be this one. Because if we did try and put that one in, its rotational counterpart, 180 degree rotation around this dot would plonk it here, which can't be in the red galaxy because galaxies don't overlap. And this is clearly in another galaxy because um, it's got a different red dot. So that is basically the rule of galaxies. Oh, the other thing was it said we had to put all the digit, all the cells in the grid in the, in, in the galaxies. So cells like all four corners will have to go in the galaxies. Um, we have to basically completely tessellate or completely tile this grid with galaxies. Um, oh, and digits may not repeat within a galaxy. Um, so once we've built the galaxies, let's say, let's say that was a galaxy, then this digit, whatever it was, couldn't go in those two squares, is the way I understand that. Um, oh yeah, and there's a, there's a negative constraint in this that sounds quite terrifying. So no two adjacent cells in the grid, i.e. no domino, may have digits that are in a one to two ratio. So, so this two, for example, cannot be orthogonally adjacent to either one or four, is what that's saying. Because, because well, one and two are clearly in a one to two ratio, and two and four are in a one to two ratio because one of the digits is double the other. And we can't have any domino in this puzzle. So for example, this three cannot be next to a six, actually it can't be next to a six in a few directions because of Sudoku. This four can't be next to an eight in any of those squares or a two in any of those squares. Um, so that they, that, that, that relationship cannot exist in any domino in the puzzle, which is quite a terrifying thing because it implies there's going to be a lot of Sudoku in this puzzle. But do have a go. A 100% three-star rated puzzle, we've explained, or I've explained, is a rare thing indeed. Now I get to, the way to play. Click the link under the video. Can't remember if I said that. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, this is great because I can be quiet here while I... Um, I just like colouring galaxies. Let's go, where's the pen, uh, the colouring tool? Let's colour in some galaxies. That can be purple, that can be blue, 
that's a new galaxy that can be red this can be gray this can be yellow this can be other green um, actually I don't that's a bit similar to actually I'm going to change that I'm going to make that one red I'm going to change that one to orange and I'm just trying to make sure there's there's reasonable um, reasonably different colorage for galaxies that are close to each other let's make that one light green now I have run out of colors unless I start using black so I'm going to reuse colors I'll make that purple because hopefully these won't bump into each other I'll make that one green I'll make this one blue I'll make this one yellow and I'll make that one red there we are <laughs> so we, oh now I've got another one oh dear um oh well green again it's very unlikely these galaxies will bump into each other I don't I don't think they actually can so okay so we should be okay with this disposition of galaxies now a tip for spiral galaxies uh, let's go to the pen tool so the way to turn on this tool which allows you to draw things like this is to click the cog icon to the right of your screen in Sven's wonderful software and click enable pen tool and that will that will bring up this option but a good tip for spiral galaxies is to frame your galaxies so for example look at this purple 2x2 here that's clearly distinct from this green domino here and when we put this line in we can immediately put that line in we can immediately put that line in because we have to remember we're always trying to get some 180 degree rotational symmetry so imagine we had tried to make this square purple well that would immediately imply that square was purple which can't be so we can immediately start to draw some of these lines into the grid that one which allows us to put this in the rotationally symmetrical point the same is true there look that the edge of the grid also provides a pinch point because that's effectively an edge of this purple galaxy so that must be an edge of the galaxy that finding the edges of the galaxy here um, then that and that are also therefore valid and let's put that bottom one in let's put that one in and that one in uh, okay all right I can, I can now see one more thing it's a little worrying that's all I can immediately see but let's 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 have a look at this square now clearly this is either joining to the green galaxy or the purple galaxy but it's not joining to the green because of this line I've just put in so it must join to the purple and that that's a, oh, that was an explosion outside that sounds a bit terrifying so that immediately allows us to extend the 180 degree symmetri symmet symmetrical cells around this point must also be purple and now we ask the question can purple grow any larger and the answer is no if we try and include this one in purple we'd have to have another cell off the edge of the grid here and if we try and include any of these cells in purple that would also reflect around this point to cells that don't exist because they're off the grid so we can immediately frame 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 a purple eye pentomino galaxy uh, right we can do that and that yeah this 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 green thing is totally hemmed in now so that's that's a domino um, no, don't know now that one maybe is that is that tricky I don't think this one well it definitely can't join the yellow galaxy because the reflection would be off the edge of the grid um, it can't join this grey galaxy again the reflection is into another galaxy it can, it can probably join that one uh, it can't join blue that's off the edge of the grid yeah you have to be very careful with spiral galaxies because they're it's very often the case that there are some weird and wonderful galaxies um although i've just had ah i've just had another thought I, don't, I actually don't think it can join that one anyway i think the reflection is too far away but one thing we must bear in mind is that you can't repeat a digit in a galaxy so some of the sort of exotic galaxies you can sometimes find in these puzzles you know enormous great galaxies like something like that um 
that can't exist in this puzzle because we can't repeat a digit in a galaxy. And here is a knowledge bomb. There are only nine Sudoku digits, so the maximum size of a galaxy is nine. Um, right, so I think that has to be orange. Is that, re is that really... I think that's fairly clear to me anyway. And then we rotate around this, so that's got to be orange. So I suspect this is orange. Let's just let's just pause and think about that. Is that orange? If it wasn't orange, orange would have to loop around there. And then oh, oh no, that's bumping into this. Isn't it? The reflection of this this uh tetromino around that galaxy is that shape. And that's bumping into blue. There's no other way of getting orange out. Right, so that doesn't work. So this square is orange, which means this square is orange. What's that then? That is definitely orange. <laughs> because, again, I mean, this is just standard spiral galaxy logic. But what I'm trying to do is I'm noticing that this tetromino, this T tetromino here, it can't join to these galaxies which are complete so it's either blue every cell in here is either blue or orange and that one cannot be blue because again the rotation is off the edge of the grid so that's definitely orange which means that's definitely orange we've already got we've got seven cells already in this galaxy so that can't be orange for many reasons but it really can't be orange <laughs> um, because it would make this galaxy more bigger than nine so that must be blue which means that must be blue i like this so far i mean i love spiral galaxies puzzles if you want to get a puzzle on cracking the cryptic a good spiral galaxy puzzle is going to be a very sensible way of approaching it yeah okay so this square also can't be orange because it's refle reflection around this galaxy point is into a gray galaxy so that square's got to be blue which means that square's got to be blue. Well, now look at that square. Whoa. That has to be blue now, which means that has to be blue. Right, this is interesting. Um, oh, in fact, it's obvious anyway, but I was going to say, we can't now extend this galaxy because any extension would, would, would take it up to size nine and the reflection of that extension would take it up to size 10. Now, in fact, we can see anyway, it's just impossible to grow this galaxy. It's It's... Any, any any increase in the size of this galaxy is going to reflect into naughty galaxies. So we mustn't reflect ourselves into naughty galaxies. That's completely absurd. Um, now, what does this mean? So we've got, we've, we've still only got seven cells of orange. But... That, well, that one might be able to join green, I think. Oh, hang on. Look, that's totally reasonable, isn't it? So what's that then? Okay, hang on. Let's, let's think about this square. That square can't join yellow. Again, the reflection is off the edge of the grid. It can't join green for the same reason. So I think it can only join grey. But the problem with that is that the reflection of that is a very modest looking galaxy isn't it that doesn't look terribly interesting uh, we can hive that cell off so this cell well does that have to be gray i think it might have to be this is the cell i'm interested in the central cell of the grid what to which other galaxy could we 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 can't we can't attach it to the anything in this this row because the reflection's off the edge of the grid again. Same is true here. I think this can only be grey given it can't be orange. Yeah. Okay. So that's grey, which means that's grey. So that allows us to draw that in. That in. That in. Still not sure. It might be able to grow. It might be able to grow slightly larger. Um, oh, that's this. This is a valid line segment because that's obviously the top of the grid bounds bounds orange. Hmm. Okay. 
can't quite see how to resolve all this, but maybe maybe it makes sense to think about some of this uh, white real estate. You can see I'm not very unsure about where to look here. I'm just trying to think about this. So, hmm. Right, there's something going on, I think, with this domino. Yeah, here is an interesting point. It's not possible for both of these cells to be green. I, uh, um, now, that I, I'm going to caveat that slightly. I'm making the presumption there, which I think looks right to me, that these two cells cannot join to anything other than orange or this green. I think that's true, isn't it? I don't think this can get to grey. No, it can't. It is going to bash into all sorts of things if we try and do that. So, OK, so this domino is either well, we have to allocate these cells, uh, maybe both to this one or both to this one, but we don't know. Oh, uh, we can't do both to this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we can't do both to this one because that would be both of those. So at least one of these is green, which means this is always green. And if that's green, uh, this is going to make my point for me, because if that's green, which we've proved it is, this is green by reflect by rotation. And look, these three squares now can't join to anything apart from green. And the reason this is interesting is that the reflection of that creates a three by three, uh, which cannot be any bigger. So it's not possible for this to be green now. So that must be orange, which means, oh, hang on, let's get the red. No, it's that one. I almost put that one in, but that's what, that wouldn't be right. So it's got to be that one now. And that completes a nine cell region of orange um, at the top, a three by three down here of green. Oh, what's OK? Well, we can see exactly what the shape of red is because these have to be red. So those have to be red as well and they can't go any bigger. So we get a sort of rectangle of red this funny thing down here is now completely bereft. It's friendless. It just has to sit on its own as the as the most tiny galaxy that you can possibly have in a spiral galaxy. This one is now it can't grow. So that we've got a sort of Z pentomino of grayliness. What is that part of? Well, that's got to be yellow. If it rotates around red, it's way off the grid, isn't it? So that's yellow which means this, oh, hang on, let's get this right. No, those two, oh, they, these two are yellow. Uh, yeah, so this this is all red because they can't be yellow now. Otherwise, yellow is going to bash into things. So we can do all of that. Yellow can't grow any larger. There are any, this cell, for example, rotates into red. Um, So surely that's, surely this is other green, isn't it? What else could that do? It can't join to stuff in the bottom of the grid. The rotation's going to be far too low. So those two, oh, look, we're going to get another isolated cell here now. So that's got to be green. The rotation of that's got to be green. We've got uh, eight, no, yes, it is eight cells. So this can't grow any larger because again, we'd have to go up to at least 10 cells. Oh, this doesn't look right. Something maybe has gone wrong down here. Is this, what's that party to? That's going to cause that, which isolates this square. Yeah, okay, I see. No, it's fine. It's fine. That square can't be green. I could see that wasn't leaving behind anything symmetric. Um, because this square is then, has no, no possible home. So that square actually, but it can be purple and join up with this one which is the full extent of purple now. So purple gets finished. And that means these two must be green, which means those two must be green. Uh, and this is working. <laughs> this is working because now what have we got left? And the beautiful thing is we have a symmetrical shape left that seems to have a center of rotation that is a red dot. So that is, I think, oh, oh, that would have triggered triggered OCD everywhere. 
there we go we've done the galaxies so we've not thought about sudoku yet um but we should probably do that now so what we can't do well okay so there is there are there's going to be loads of stuff we can do here. So one thing I'm seeing immediately is quite hard to see, actually, now, now I'm looking at it. But we have to sort of imagine that we can still visualize the three by three boxes of Sudoku. Oh, look, look, no, there's another thing. I've just, that's a one. Because this is a three by three box. This is box four of the Sudoku. And there's a one here. So where do we put one in this box if we can't repeat within a galaxy? There is the answer. That's got to be a one. Um, that means one of these two squares is a one. And th this square can't be a one because it's in orange. So that's got to be a one. Oh, and the other reason it couldn't be a one is there is a one in its row. I'm not used to having given digits though. So you can't blame me for that. That's just, um, that's just Scojo's fault for including ridiculous givens in, in the puzzle. Um, now we can't put ones near twos, can we? So maybe. Uh, well, yeah, no, I'm going to do. I'm going to use that then. So where is one in box five? We can't see box five very well, but we can see it can't be next to the two, and it can't repeat in orange. So it's in one of two cells. It's in one of those two, which means it's in green here. Oh, the other thought I was having is where's this digit in box six? It can't repeat in green, so it, it is in blue at the top. Although I suspect digits like seven, although now I'm seeing we can do some Sudoku. I suspect digits like seven are not going to be the powerful ones because five, seven and nine are the digits that can never appear on a black Kropke dot in Sudoku. So they can never be subject to the negative constraint that we've got going on here around dominoes that can't contain um, uh, digits in a one to two ratio. So the digits I'm expecting to be, to be powerful are ones, twos, threes, fours, sixes, and eights. Um, right, but having said that, how do we do this? Don't know. Ah, okay, let's have a look at this box here, which is box eight. There is a two right in the middle of that box, knocking one out of all of those squares. So oh, one is actually placed in this box, which means one is placed in box five, which means one is in one of two places, I think, in box nine. So how many ones have we got? One, two, three. Right, we've got seven ones. There are nine ones in any Sudoku, or most Sudokus at any rate. So we're left with an X-wing of ones. I can't immediately see how we're going to do that. So let's go to twos, double click the twos. So what do we know about twos? They can't go next to fours or ones. Okay. That might be the world's worst. Well, hmm. So just let's ask a quick question. Where is the two in box three? We've got a two in the blue galaxy, so it's not in any of those, and it can't be next to a one. So two is actually in one of two places. Right, where is... Oh, this is huge. Yeah, well, where is two in box one? Again, it can't go next to four, because two and four are in a one to two ratio. There's a two pencil mark here, so two goes there in the red galaxy, which means two goes into the blue galaxy. Now, how many twos have we got now? Well, we've, we've increased our quota of twos up to four. Um, we can, we can't put two next to one. So two is in one of two places in box four. Oh, this is gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. So where's two in this box now? It can't go in blue or it, there would be two twos in blue. So it has to go in orange. Which means we get it in box, box uh, three, two. Oh, I see. Right, this is more straightforward now. Um, two, two has to appear. Any nine cell cage has to has a, have a two in it. Where do we put the two in this one? So it's got to be there, doesn't it? Because it can't repeat in its own box, even though we can't see the box. Um, oh, no. 
I've got a horrible feeling we're left with a one, two, three. Yeah, we look, we've got seven twos. And we've got this configuration now. Okay, that might have just died a death then. Uh, all right, so we're going to have to go to threes then. Let's go to three. Oh, I've only got one three. Well, okay, that's very disappointing. But three in box two can't repeat in orange. Oh, no, it can't go next to a six. There we go. It's fine. It can't go here because three and six are, are, two, uh, are in a one to two ratio. So three goes here. So three is in one of two places in purple down there. What about... Okay, that's... Uh, mm -hmm. How are we going to improve upon that situation then? don't know. Oh, I've just noticed a, um, a geometry thing about this box. Where does that digit go in this box? It can't repeat in yellow and it can't go in its own column and it's not equal to one. So those two digits are the same. All right, we need to find a way of we'll label those up. These two digits are the same number. So A is in one of those squares. So I'm actually tempted Is it silly to want to pencil mark that? It might be. I think there are a lot of options for this, but I am. I, I do think I'm going to label them. I think it, it can't be one, two, three, or four by Sudoku now because I one of these cells sees one, two, three, and four. So, so I think it might be able to be five. It might be able to be six actually. Neither of those A's is near a three, is it? So six can't be 7 because A is appearing down here and that will beat that up. And it can't be 8 because this 4 is next to it. Next to it. So it's, it's 5, 6 or 9. Hmm. Okay, sorry, that's actually not useful at all. Um, let's try... Should we try 4s? Well, we've got two 4s. Yes, let's try 4s. Can we do... We, well, we can nearly do something with 4 in box 5 straight away because it can't go next to the 2. So 4 is in one of two places, which means 4 has appeared now, all but, all but it's floating. We don't know where it is in orange, but we know it's in one of those squares. So it's not in any of those squares. It can't go next to 2. Oh, is that's ridiculous. So does it have to go there? I just want to think about that. 4 is in one of these squares. It can't go in there. It can't go next to 2. It is. So 4 is there, which actually tells us where the 4 goes back in orange again. This is 4 now by Sudoku because that one can't be 4. 4 goes down there in box 7. Oh, I can to you can totally see why this puzzle is so popular. It's just gorgeous. This is a 4 by Sudoku. How many 4s have we got? Loads. Um... Yes, yes. And now where does 4 go in box 3? And the answer is not next to a 2. So it must go there, which means that's a 4. And out of nowhere, we have done all the 4s. The 2 is next to a 1. So I can't... So I don't know... I don't know if that's happened recently, but that's that can't work anymore. I can't believe I didn't see that. I probably didn't see that when I put it in. What a... What a doofus, um, as Mark would say. Uh, let's try. So fours are done. So what about, well, next digit's going to be, ooh, six, I was going to say, but that doesn't look very good at all. Um, hmm. Six can't go next to three, but we don't have that many threes in the grid. Uh, maybe eight? Could eight be a thing here? I don't know. Ah, I've had another, I had a different thought. That digit. Where does that digit go in box six? Now, it can't repeat in its own cage, and it can't go in its own column. 
and it's not equal to 2. This digit is not 2 because because 2 is there. So it goes there, which means the se it's weird. The 7, therefore, in this box has to be there because this digit and this digit are the same. Oh, this is this is huge. Right. So not only do we get the 7 here, but because these two digits are the same, let's label those B. Um, where does B go in, in this column? And the answer is it can't go, it can't repeat in, in its own galaxy. So if B goes up there. Now, I don't know what that means, but this cell itself can only be 3, 6, 8 or 9. Can't be 8, it would be next to 4. So 3, 6 or 9. Right, and that digit can't be 6 or 3 because it's next to a 6 and if it was 3 it would be in a 1 to 2 ratio so that's 9. That is absolutely absurd. So those are all 9s. Uh, this is so clever. I see. I can see something that's doing here but let, let's come back to that. Let's just see if we can do something with the 9s. Yes, 9 comes out of my other digit over here now which is down to 5 or 6. Um, Oh, bobbins. So these are five, six, and eight. Now, can we do something with that? Yes. Yes. There's two threes looking at those squares. So that's a five, eight pair. That's become a six, which means that's a six. So there's a six down here. Well, I'm, I'm going to look at this now, because if we look at um, this 3x3 three three galaxy, we've not put 3 and 6 into it yet. So how could this square be 3 or 6? It can't be, because it'll form a naughty domino in one direction or the other, with the other of 3 and 6. So this needs to be the chaperone digit, which looks like it's 8, and that's got to be a 3-6 pair. Um... I'm sure that's resolved. I'm just just let me stare at this for a second or two. Uh, oh, it might not be. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I, I bet there's some negative constraint or something. I'm just not seeing that, how that gets resolved. Okay, so let's try those squares then. They're obviously 3, 5 and 6 with a 5 definite. Well, that's not 6, is it? Um... By Sudoku, that's not three by Sudoku. I know one of these is a five. This is a chocolate teapot triple. We've got every possible combination of a sort of two two digits being selected from the digits three, five, and six. Oh bother. Okay, oh right, oh there's something easier then. Where does seven go in this box? It's got to be in there, can't go in its column, doesn't seem to be able to go into any other cell, so that's a 7. Right, so what does that do? So now these squares are now known, they are 3, 5 and 8. None of those can be, well the 3 can't be next to the 6. These squares are a 7, 9 pair. 7 and 9 are the most annoying digits, aren't they, in this form of Sudoku? Because they just, well, apart from, there's a given 7. Okay, that's kind. 7 and 9 get resolved then. So 7 is in one of those two squares. Yeah, that digit's interesting, I'm suddenly seeing. Because that digit can't repeat in orange. And it's a 5 or an 8, so I think it has to go there in... Oh, this is good. This is good. But because this digit, I think, in this box has to go into this square. But we know one of those is a 5 from the work we did earlier, so that has to be an 8. Which means that has to be an 8. Which means that's a 5. And... Oh, this is an 8 cell re... Oh! Here's a thought. This is an 8-cell region, so it's missing one digit. Well, it's missing the digit 1, because that 1 here sees the whole of that, that, that thingy. So this digit is from 3, 5, and 6, and it's not 3. So that, the, Right, so this digit is 5 or 6, and this is great, because the moment you write the 3 in here, 
this can't be the six anymore so that gets all, that all gets resolved that's an eight therefore uh, this is a five seven pair which is now resolved we know that this is a that's a nine <laughs> I, I, I did it by looking at that why would I do that when then this is just basically finished why do I have to look at that and scan that rather than look at that I do not know I do not know uh, right that three is a six now that gives us a three here I think we seem to be making reasonable progress um, I shouldn't have said that I shouldn't have said that that's mad why did I do that oh look six and eight down here well four can't go next to eight so the eight goes here the four goes here ah hang on hang on something's gone wrong no that's fine the eight goes here and then I wrote four in here I should have written six in here I've not put six in the column and that's what the pencil marks were telling me that's no longer a six uh, these two squares have got to be three and five and we can't put the three next to the oh we don't get a three in the corner bobbins this six stopped it um now oh, you rotten thing okay um maybe we have a look at well that square might be interesting now i look at the geometry of box eight because this square can't repeat in purple so it is one of these squares and you can see it this square here can't be a four so this digit does go down in one of those two squares and its options are five and seven, five, seven or nine. That's not five, so seven or nine. And whatever it is, it repeats down here. Mm, actually, that's not, that's not a very clever deduction, sorry. Uh, let's try six, seven and nine. Ah, that's a naked single. That C, six and nine, six here, nine here. So that's seven. That's nine, that should be six. Assuming my scanning hasn't gone completely to pot. This is two, five, and seven. That's seven, that's not two. This is a five naked single. Five comes out of here. So this, ah, oh, this is three or eight, and it can't be three. Oh, this is great. This is gonna give us a three here, because this can't be three in the column. It would be next to six. So that's got to be eight, which means that that's three in the corner that's three in the spot light losing its religion so that's two that's seven uh, this box it's a bit difficult to scan it but three and nine i think are, are what we're looking for and well that's weird i don't think that's actually resolved okay it probably is i just can't see why ah four can't go next to eight here so five goes here eight goes here Still, that didn't resolve the 3-9. Um, oh, this became a 9, did it? So 9 is in one of those two squares. But what that's worth. What about this column? 3 and 6. Well, we can do that. That's a 6. That's a 3. So in this column, we need 5 and 7. Which we can also do. 7 and 5 go in. Um, so this is, uh, no, it's not one nine, is it? It's nine and eight. Oh, we can do that. Okay, eight, nine. So the bottom row needs two and nine. And that's done now. So that's nine and that's three. Yeah, I think this is, this is now finished, isn't it? In theory, at least. Five, six, and eight. So eight, six, five. Now now i'm just staring at the naughty digits just momentarily before i click tick just to and it felt right didn't it i just wasn't checking for the negative constraint on those last few digits as they went in so if i did put one in then that's bad let's see if, oh it likes it good there we go absolutely beautiful puzzle 76 people have solved that in 9.6 days well that needs to be higher because anti-ratio astronomy by skojo is an absolute joy fest and very cleverly put together it's i mean it's just beautiful it's a beautiful idea i love the way the spiral galaxies i love spiral galaxies full stop but the, the way that that then interplayed with this weird negative constraint rule was gorgeous these nine cell regions were doing magic um it's just a beautiful puzzle fully deserving its perfect rating let me know in the comments if you had a go and let me know how you got on i enjoy the comments 
especially if they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>